All right, guys, we are back for the four-handed here at the Rolling Thunder in Lincoln, California. As you can see, we've taken some of the smaller denomination ships off the table. Robbie now sitting with a couple of stacks of pink in front of him. He's got a 6-5 in the small blind. So far, we've seen him, uh, you know, kind of play the complete game. Oh, he's going to raise. Taking it at 75,000, two and a half X. Over to Jesse. 7-3 suited. I think Jesse will peel here. Suited cards in the big, facing two and a half X. And he folds. And I was wrong. I think that's pretty close there. Certainly, if he was deeper, he's going to call. Uh... And I don't really mind it because Ravi has been so willing to fire that it's a little trickier to get the showdown cheaply with right. him like 7-3 suited. But a lot of people end up peeling there. Robbie now with a real hand on the button. Ace King offsuit. Puts the hood on. <laughs> That's odd. <laughs> Look at that. What is that? Okay, 75,000. <laughs> so is that what you would call a poker tell, Tony? Potentially. And it looks like both both Jesse and uh, and Taylor fold immediately. Maybe they thought it was a poker tell. Strange choice there. Would, would you find that one in Caro's little book of poker tells? Man, it's been a while since I've opened that one up. Have you? Did you look at that one back in the day? A little bit, a little bit. I can't say that live tells has uh -huh. been a massive part of my game. Yeah. How about for you? Uh, ten years ago, I took it really seriously, and I still think I, I learned some valuable things from it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something I've paid much attention to lately and also i think after you spend enough time at the table you kind of develop your own tells that you look for or ones that you lend more credence to um but he did identify a lot of those it was him who made me think about what i should be looking for i particularly watch eyes i see where eyes go i see what they look at i want to see when they click down to their chips when a flop or a turn comes out um some people are more careful about it than others pros are really good about not giving away tells with their eyes whereas i think uh, amateur or intermediate players are really bad about it. Yeah. No, it, it is interesting. I, I would have interpreted what Ravi just did there as strong. It seemed like he was he was drawing attention to the fact that he was raising from his button. So it seemed like that he was trying to act weak or like he was simply making a raise because it was his button. Now we have a uh, interesting spot where Jesse has opened pocket fours on the button, and Taylor's gonna coming out firing with a three bet here from the small blind, pocket tens. 
Yeah, Taylor essentially is trying to get Jesse's stack in. And uh, I don't know whether Jesse would take him up on it. Certainly if he had sixes, he would probably go for it. I don't know about fours. Oh, he did he? No, no, no. That was computers doing some stuff. I also thought Jesse had fewer chips. Did that just adjust all of a sudden? Because it seemed like he had a smaller stack a moment ago, according to our reasons. I didn't think he was that short. But it actually makes it maybe a little more reasonable to 4-bet jam now, because he has full diversity. Really and he is going to go all in, I think. And a call. And so he is in a dominated position here. Jesse Rockowitz at risk of going out in fourth with a pair of fours. 9-6-5, not really any help. He does pick up a backdoor straight draw. A four. Wow. Jesse finds the card he needs, and now Taylor needs one of the two remaining tens in the deck. And it is a six, and so Jesse, with a little help on the turn, will double up here. And that actually will make Taylor our short stack. Wow, How that, frustrating. that definitely changes things, and mm -hmm. Taylor cannot be happy right now. What do you think about that shove there with Pocket Pours preflop? I think it's fine if you think Taylor is going to apply a bunch of pressure on you. You've got a nice stack size to rip it in there. Pairs are one of those hands that are lend themselves to going all in as opposed to flatting preflop. Um, it's all going to depend on what I think Taylor's 3-bet light frequency is like. I don't, I'll say this, I don't mind it. Um, it's not an auto shove for me, but you only have to get a few pips higher on the pair chain before I'm pretty much automatically ripping it in Would there. you be more happy shoving if you were shorter stacked? Jesse started the hand with 34 big blinds. Yeah. Maybe slightly fewer blinds. Okay. Like, you know, when you go to what? I want to say he made it 60 or 70 and then Taylor made it 170. Right. Like, you have fold equity with around 700,000 plus, you know, maybe even a little less than that, but I feel good ripping around 700,000 to a million. Uh, so you think there would be fold equity with 24 big blinds? Potentially. Considering we now play the min-raise game and the small three-bet game, I think mm -hmm. you have more fold equity with 24 or 25 big blinds than you did when people used to go 2.5x or 3x. Um, he had a, about an ideal stack to make that, that play with, you know, I think maybe the ideal stack is right around like 800k, 900k. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you more likely to make that play with pocket fours or with a hand like ace five suited? Fours than ace five suited, yeah, definitely. So would fours be the best bluff to make that play with? It is among the best hands that you'd be bluffing with that are the best to make that, that play with. Jack 10 suited or pocket fours? Well, jack 10 suited will probably flat. You're deep right. enough that you can flat for a little more, and it just lends itself to post-flop plays so well, whereas fours do not, obviously. you just If you peel fours, you're just going to give up on the flop an absolute ton. Uh, so, it, you know, if I was going to take a lighter hand that I was going to cram it in there, fours are a pretty good one to pick. Well, nonetheless, it was a big pop between our two WSOP bracelet winners at this final table. Jesse Rockowitz and Taylor Parr, the two players at this final table who have World Series of Poker bracelets. Taylor won his in 2013. He won $340,000 in a 1K no limit event. That is Taylor's second biggest cash in the history of his live tournaments. Uh, his biggest cash, of course, coming about a week ago at Bay 101, or less than a week ago, where he won $1.2 million. And as we've talked about, he's now going for back-to-back -back WPT titles. Jesse Rockowitz's uh, event that he won at the World Series of Poker was in 2010. He won a $1,500 no-limit event, um, and that is how he went ahead and got his bracelet. That's his biggest live cash, and it's one of the things that has propelled him to having over $1 million in live tournament earnings. That was a big $1,500 no-limit event. That was for about 700 k Yeah, those things are huge. Robbie opened up. The ace-jack here out of the small. Jesse called with king-four. He flops a pair in nine-four-deuce. 
Ravi also with some draws here. Backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. Over cards still have some value. Often used as the best hand with an ace jack here. by Robbie and a call by Jesse. Six of spades doesn't change very much on the turn. I wouldn't expect Ravi to bet again here, but he is uh, he has been making more bets than we anticipate him making. Robbie has a wide array of talents and hobbies. He is a chess player, he is a cricket player, and he also is a swimmer. Chess is a good background to have going into poker. Certainly. A lot of the top players were serious chess players in their youth. Jesse is, is more of an outdoorsman. His hobbies include hiking and, and camping, backpacking. And there's certainly a lot of things to do like that around Northern California and, and Central California he's been enjoying. Both players check on the six of spades in the turn, so we get another six on the river. I would really not like it if Ravi bet here. I think that's just throwing money away. Um, it's an interesting question whether Jesse should bet if he's checked to. My inclination is yes. I think he has the best hand a lot. Um, Ravi is a little bit sticky and might call him with worse hands, and uh, your king kicker is pretty important there, wouldn't you, Theo? I agree. It does look like Ravi is, is contemplating him bet here. Check. He ends up checking, yeah, and we'll see. Yeah. Jesse quickly checks behind. He doesn't even consider a value bet. Yeah. Huh, I'm a little surprised that he didn't even think it over. I, I, Ravi seems like a pretty cool guy to make those type of bets against. Something interesting about the remaining four players at this final table, Tony, that I just realized, all four players have facial hair. But it, they're very different styles of facial hair going on here. Have you ever had a beard or a mustache? Uh, no, I've had like a month-long period where I just didn't get around to shaving, but <laughs> I would be giving myself a lot of credit to call that a beard. Um, I just didn't get the beard growing genes. How about yourself? Me either. Yeah, yeah. I can. G I shave about once every year, and that, <laughs> that's enough. We're both pretty young-looking guys and uh, pretty light-haired guys. So I don't know. I think the dudes who have uh, who have darker hair typically look better with their beards. Well, Harrison looks entirely different yeah. than he looked when he won the PCA in 2010. He's I gone full-blown Viking Redbeard. Yes. Yeah. Now, is that intimidating at the poker table? Um, not at his age, no. <laughs> afraid not. Sorry, Harrison. He's just not a very scary guy. I think he's an excellent poker player, but he's not uh, an intimidating person. And Taylor, Taylor's facial hair makes him look a little bit French. Yeah, his his is a uh, very minor. Right. Is would you consider that a, a goatee? Maybe half of one. <laughs> Looks like he's gonna three bet here out of the big blind with five four offsuit. Um. I don't know if this is the type of hands I three bet out of the big blind. I mean, I do like that it's, you know, so he's going to defend fairly wide against Harrison, and he's taking a hand that's a little below his defend range, but I don't know, 5-4 offsuit just doesn't play that well, connect that well. Maybe I would just, like, 3-bet something like medium offsuit kings that are a little awkward post-flop, or, like, offsuit medium 
means. Um, now he might he might be thinking like, hey, listen, you know, Robbie is not going to be folding to my three bets. That yeah. Harrison has has been playing a little more on the snug side. This could be my opportunity to to win some chips here and add to my stack. But that being said, Harrison has not been opening a ton pre flop either. So you're going to be attacking a, a pretty a, a slightly more tight range. Um, I, I would not have three bet the four or five offsuit here. I probably would have defended. Well, he'll have to follow through now, but it's one of those annoying boards where a lot of your opponent's flatting range has connected here, and you have absolutely no equity. But also, when you're representing hands like an ace king, uh, you know you're gonna have to follow through. But it's tricky. Like besides ace king and aces, and tens. How many of your other value hands follow through with a bet on this flop? I believe I would check pocket jacks and pocket queens. Right. So it was pretty much be my top pair and second pair type hands, yeah. or of course the semi bluffs that are strong enough right. to 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 go with. You'd happen the to ace queen hand, of like, diamonds. Yeah, yeah. If you three bet that or ace jack of diamonds, it's gonna work this time, I think. Um. Do you do you think that Taylor was more likely to three bet based on his stack size that he could be thinking, oh well, Harrison knows that that there is some ICM here between me and Jesse, and therefore I should have a tighter range. Possibly, if anything, you know, Harrison is the guy that's going to be the most clued in that Taylor shouldn't be three betting that wide there. Uh, so perhaps he expects a few more folds from him. But it's still an awkward hand to do it with. Um, I wouldn't even have considered a three bet in his spot. Yeah, I, I think I just end up folding there pre flop. I think I would have peeled. Yeah. Um, interesting. I guess it's just a min raise, call or fold seems fine. Right. Yeah, um, I would have. I would have called. I get. I guess Taylor might just be in it to win it. He might want to go. Yeah. He, he's Taking might the be thinking about. To this final yeah. I mean, well, I'll tell you what. He's he just won 1.2 million less than a week ago. So right now, moving up the additional, moving up from fourth place to, to third place for the additional 20,000 probably isn't the, the first thing on his mind. Becoming a back-to-back -back WPT champion, uh, just the fourth in WPT history, the third in the same season, that is something that could be yeah. very appealing to Taylor. Very much so. Well, you've got a nice hand here with the king nine of spades. Now, is Taylor at this point in, in the player of the year race? I don't know. It seems like Anthony Zeno might have that, not if not locked up, close to. He's got yeah. like six or seven caches, two wins. He won the biggest event on the tour of the season. Um, but if he wins both of these events, then certainly if he does something big, oh, wow, he just flopped the nuts. Uh, then certainly if he does something big in the next two events, he presumably could surpass Zeno, but I'm not exactly sure. Well, if he keeps getting flops like this, then there's certainly a chance that he will be a back-to-back -back WPT champion. He flops the nut flush here with the king nine of spades. Do you believe Harrison will peel? Nope. No. I would have folded as well. What are the next two events that are coming up, Tony? We have the Seminole Hard Rock 5 million. I will pull up the exact dates for you in one second. But that is a 3,500 re-entry. I want to say it has two days of registration. I thought uh, it was April 17th, somewhere in that ballpark. We will have that for you one sec. And uh, I'm looking at the WPT site right now. I don't want to spoil what happens on his stream, but let's just say something interesting is going to happen in the next 30 minutes. Uh, our WPT Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown, April 16th to 22nd, down in Hollywood, Florida. And then the WPT Championship from April 25th to 29th, that's a 15K. Uh, both of those are great events. Um, I will not be at Florida, but I will be at the Borgata. Harrison here going to complete in the small. Ravi with the jack nine. I think he'll raise, but might check. Raise to a total of 
I'm a little surprised he limp folded for 2.5x there. I don't think it's a crazy thing to do, but uh, if Ravi had gone 3x, I would have expected a fold at 2.5. I thought Harrison might go ahead and peel there. So here we have the updated chip counts. Mm -hmm. Taylor Parr bringing up the rear with 58 big blinds. However, he and Jesse Rockowitz are, are pretty close, and then the difference between Jesse Rockowitz and Harrison now is, is pretty close, and Robbie has a pretty clear chip advantage right now with 146 big blinds. Taylor under the gun with a seven offsuit. He raises it up to X. And Harrison with the 8-5 of hearts. I, I will expect him to be folding here as we've seen him fold the 9-7 or spade. Three bet. This is, again, kind of those hands we talked about before where you're in position, you've got someone who opens fairly frequently, your hand's not quite good enough to call. And we haven't seen Harrison do much three betting at this final table. That's what I'm saying is yeah. that is I think that this is a different... I would mark this down a tier from the 9-7 of spades. Um, so if he if he elected to fold the nine seven of spades, he might very well elect to fold this. But he is thinking about it, and he could he could simply think that right now is a is a better time in terms of meta game to go ahead and, and make a move, and he does. And he does indeed. One seventy five. So just shy of three x, and here is Robbie in the small blind with the ladies. would think he's going to four bet, but he's reaching for chips that say call. And he does call. Wow. I mean, we saw him make aggressive plays pre-flop enough that I would think he would just go ahead and four bet the queens, but uh, I am mistaken. Taylor gets out of the way. We have a heads up flop between Harrison and Ravi, and it is king 4-4. Four, four. So not a bad flop for Harrison to try and bluff Ravi off of his hand. Now, what's interesting, Tony, is that it may have worked to Robbie's advantage, having shown the pocket deuces yeah. earlier. If he is going to choose to just flat the queens out of the small blind, of course now he doesn't have the most favorable flop in the world. So if Harrison is going to be very aggressive on this board, Robbie needs to tread lightly. But it looks like Robbie is reaching for chips. He does some very strange leads. We see he, we see him do total bluff leads. We see him lead some good hands. We see him lead some middling hands, like this one is on this texture. I don't like this lead at all because I think it's a texture where your opponent is going to bluff with a hundred or is going to follow through with a hundred percent of his bluffing hands yeah and you have a very clear and easy call down and if your opponent gives you action on this texture you just can't be happy uh, you might be depriving him an opportunity to try and bet you off your hand I, I just really don't like this play from Ravi and it also seems like a way ahead way behind kind of situation yes Now, what would you be thinking here if you're Harrison? Apparently, I'd be thinking rates. Wow, that's a pretty sizable raise. Yeah. I, I, I don't like this play. Yeah, I don't know. I probably just wouldn't screw with it. I don't think... I mean, I guess if you think that Ravi is flatting all his pairs pre, and then maybe he's making this little exploratory bet with them... Uh, this makes sense, but man, Ravi's is kind of sticky. But the question is, what value hand would you raise on this flop? I just wouldn't. If know? I had Ace King, I'm I would call. I, so, I wouldn't have. My, wow, and that man. is that is a very very interesting turn for for Harrison. The pot to stack ratio is about one to one here. Now, do you think there's a there's a bone in Ravi's body that is worried right now? That is worried that maybe his opponent has a king, maybe his opponent has a four. Again, I don't think I would play any value hands. Is Ravi going to lead again? Ro no, Ravi weird... checked he the He did turn. check. Oh, I saw him counting yeah. down chips, and I missed the check, and I was like, what is going on? Now, as played, I 
I would be surprised if Harrison didn't go all in here. With a one to one pot to stack ratio, with a flush draw and a gut shot. And he's all in. He does. I'll tell you this, Harrison ain't scared. I mean, when you raise that flop, that is the best turn you could possibly get for your, your hand there. Um, and he certainly has to follow through with his with his semi bluff here. Uh, now, of course, Ravi is is in a spot where he only beats a bluff. But as we've discussed, Ravi is here to win it. He's not l interested in in folding to move up in the money. And it's going through his head right now. You know, could my opponent be on a complete bluff? Looking at Harrison, sizing him up. Harrison keeping his eyes down, trying not to give, give off any tells. chips here with queens on a king high board this is more than half of Robbie's stack he would need to invest to make the call here it's a huge huge decision for Robbie obviously Har Harrison sweating Robbie's decision and Harrison has to know right now what Robbie has um, or he might think he has a hand like even King Jack or King 10. It's really hard to put Harrison on, on a complete bluff here, just going all in. And, of course, it, it did take a very specific turn to hit Harrison's backdoor draws here. Surprised Robbie wants to think this one over for quite a while. What would you be thinking in Robbie's spot here, Tony? Uh, I would be thinking, why didn't I four bet pre? Um, why did I lead the flop? Why? I just, I don't know. It's one of those spots where it's like, what would you do in this spot? I'm like, I don't know. I could never get in this spot. I just couldn't, you know? But as played, would you expect Harrison <laughs> to raise a flop with any value hands? I guess the simple answer is no, but the tricky part is if Harrison perceives Ravi as sticky, then maybe he would, but uh, no, I think the simple answer is no. I don't expect him to raise his best hands on this such an uncoordinated flop. See, I would be go two things would be going through my head. One, I don't expect him to raise any value hands on the flop, Yep. so therefore I should call. However, if he made it to the turn on a pure bluff, I do not expect him to go all in on a pure bluff on the turn. So it would have taken a very specific type of hand, like yes. the one he has, in order for him to actually be bluffing in this spot and in order for him to go all in in the turn. If he had pure air, I would expect him to go about one-third pot on the turn and shove the river um, if, he wanted to, if he wanted to bluff for his whole stack. So now when he just goes all in, I guess that, that, that is the other interesting question here is, if, you know, if Harrison did have ace-king... Would he just go all in on this turn, or would he bet something closer to 30% like pot? pot? Yeah. That that was something that occurred to me when Harrison made his bet. Or maybe that, like, Harrison actually has more fold equity going, like, one-third pot turn, ripping river. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. 
And it's always tough to predict what a guy like Ravi is going to interpret your bets as. I feel like a guy like Ravi would be more likely to call on the river once he sees all the chips that are in the pot. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I... I do like Harrison's... I do like Harrison's shove here. Robbie has been into the tank for quite a while here. Tony, at a, at a final table in a spot like this, is it ever acceptable to to call to call the clock? After how long would that be acceptable? Are you and talking in Harrison's position? I'm talking for any player at the table. If it I probably just wouldn't, I, especially against somebody who I don't think is prone to wasting time. And Robbie hasn't. If right. He has a really tough decision. I'm just going to give him as long as he needs. If somebody was a, a blatant staller or time waster, mm -hmm. then I'm more likely to try and clock him at some point. But that hasn't been Robbie's thing at all. Not at all. So uh, I'll, I'll give him as long as he wants. Robbie asked for the third time what the bet is. And you can tell that if Robbie folds here, it, it really is going to pain him to have to make this fold. <laughs> oh, man. Is there anything that Harrison, the professional, could say or do here to influence Robbie, the amateur, to fold? Oh, he announced wow. Call. wow. What a call. What a call by Robbie. Now you can see. Please, dealer, don't do this to me. Robbie beg, begging the dealer to hold. As you can see, Harrison has 11 outs here. Uh, but man, what a call by Robbie. And it holds the nine of clubs. Harrison Gimble is going to be our fourth place finisher. He's going to take home $83,818. Got to tell you, Kane, I really liked Harrison as the favorite coming into this final table. Such a tough player. Obviously both the, you know really technically proficient and with the heart to follow through on some of his plays, as we just saw there, but he gets snapped off by Ravi, and uh, man, what a hand. Ravi becomes a giant chip leader. Harrison coming into the final table with over three million in live tournament earnings. He obviously was a very successful online player. He played well today. He didn't have the most favorable flops and turns for his hands. No. And he was, he was still aggressive. He still fought through it, and in that spot, he... He, after raising the flop and getting that turn, he had to go all in, and Robbie just made a fantastic call. And now Robbie with almost 250 big blinds, and now we have a serious, serious ICM yeah. situation between Jesse Rockowitz and Taylor Parr here because the difference between second and third place, Tony, is $30,000, uh, which is significant. Or, I'm sorry, uh, $60,000. 60000 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I misspoke there, which which now is, that is the most significant jump. It, it is more than double the jump that we just undergone between fourth and third place. Wow. But still, congratulations to Harrison. He, he, you know, he played very well the whole tournament. Um, coming from, you know, he started playing poker when he was 13 years old, actually. His brother, Danny Gimbel, uh, was playing home games with $10 home tournaments, how a lot of poker players end up starting and congratulations to Danny as well he actually just graduated from law school so a good showing by his brother Harrison and now we're down to to three-handed here wow what a hand what a call by Ravi there man he's gonna enter the next hand with ace something Jesse you're with king nine in the small Ace Jack is his hand. I'm going after the five dollars, man. I know you are. What do you think I'm doing? I got a ways to go, though, don't I? I know. Here we go through the clock. 
Taylor will call with queen five of hearts in the big blind. Both players whiff the four three three flop. Looks like Ravi's going to follow through with a little bet here. That should win the pot for him. Uh, it is a check call from Taylor here. A little bit surprising there. I would call if I had a uh, if there was a heart on the board in right. this position. I normally don't peel without a heart. So it's another bet from Ravi here. He follows through for another 140 on the turn. Again, it's one of those bets where I'm not sure what Ravi wants to accomplish. Is he betting because he thinks he has the best hand? Is he betting because he thinks he can get a better hand to fold? Well, no better hand's going to fold here. He's got a four. Obviously, he's not folding a three. What the hell? Oh, Taylor bet out. Ta ta yeah. Taylor bet out. That's what happened, which makes more sense. And Ravi just, like, ripped it on him or something. He just put a stack of pink in the middle. What a legend this guy is. Putting him to the ultimate test, and he is here to win. He is here to win. Ravi has quickly become just like one of my favorite players that I've seen <laughs> doing the live stream. You know, he acts fairly quickly. Uh, he's just, you know, so confident in himself at the table, but he's like enjoying himself too. You know, we know uh, that he's got kind of an opportunity to make history here, having, you know, not played a bunch of WPTs and then all of a sudden, boom, you make a final table and the next one you go and win. Uh, I mean, how, how crazy is that? His only live tournament cash was last week in the Bay 101 for $168,000. <laughs> He drives up to Sacramento, enters this tournament, and now he's here in the final three with a massive chip advantage, going for his first WPT championship of the second tournament that he's ever cashed in. And playing, and playing like, frankly, playing like a champion. I mean, that, that call with pocket yeah. queens, that's a tough call to make. Yeah, a really tough call to make. That play with that, a six of spades. Cold, four, uh, cold three bet. Uh, four betting Jesse. I mean, he's, he's in here to win it. He's got a pair of deuces here he defended the big blind with. Jesse with a king seven of spades. Interesting, Jesse. Jesse checked back the king seven here. Do you think that has something to do with him kind of perceiving how how sticky Robbie has been? Yeah, I think that that Jesse is going to increasingly apply a strategy where he just bets when he has it against Robbie and uh, aims to get the showdown with ace high, king high, things like that. Where now the five the, the five is actually an interesting turn as it's yeah. a as it should be perceived as a decent turn card for Jesse's range as he would be checking back some fives but he does let it go I probably would have let it go there as well against Robbie um, but after checking back the flop when the middle card does pair I, I do tend to get some thoughts about yeah. maybe I should raise and try to try to go ahead and rep trips here I would be more likely to do it if I check back a hand on the flop that has some equity if I check back some type of uh, gut shot or something like that. Yeah, and I'm also a little more worried about making those type of plays against Ravi because he's been both sticky or just like willing to three bet you or something right. like that. Um, I like I like where your head is at, but I think I would try and make those plays against somebody like Taylor or like a Harrison, and less so against a Ravi. Sure. Is Taylor gonna raise the eight six off here on his button? Nah. No. Guys, we want to give you one more reminder. There's another about 45 minutes to build your teams in the lineups over on DraftKings before the NBA tip-off tonight. we got an 11-game slate. we got some big tournaments tonight, including a $50 satellite to the WPT event at the Seminole Hard Rock. That's a $6,300 package you can win. But you also got a $30 buy-in with a 150k guarantee on it. You got a $300 buy-in with an 80k guarantee on it. So, uh, and if you want to challenge me, I'm going to definitely get in the cash games, the heads-up games tonight. 
under my screen name, uh, Tony Dunst WPT. So send me a challenge on DraftKings. I will take your action. Let's go. It's battle time. We got 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, we might be out of here in 45 minutes the way Robbie's rocking this table. Uh, Kane and I made a little over-under bet at the, at the break about, oh, when's this going to end? And I thought there's all these chips. The blinds are still fairly low compared to stacks. Uh, I think we're going to be here for a while. But after Robbie knocked out Harrison, I think I'm, I'm looking, really liking your side of the I think I'm bet. looking pretty good in this, I'm in this liking bet we have, side. Tony. So this is interesting. Robbie has raised here preflop, and he is checking the nut low presumably to fold on this board. This is one of the first hands we've seen Ravi kind of give in to his relentless aggression here. Um, he does turn a gut shot, so we'll see what he does here. And it is an interesting turn because Ravi could check some ace highs. If I were Ravi, though, I would I would continue to be checking with two flush draws on this board. It, this is just not one of the hands that I would choose to, to have in my semi-bluff range. I don't think it's strong enough, but he goes ahead and bets, and Jesse with the jack eye is going to lay it down. I'm looking forward to, to saying hello to uh, to Ravi when this is all said and done, <laughs> telling him that I think his play today was very heroic and that I, I admire that he came here and played to win. You know, like a lot of guys, they just kind of come in, they freeze up a little bit, and they just they play to not lose. And that is so clearly not what he's done today. Very cool to watch from somebody who, uh, who doesn't, you know, play a ton of live tournaments. Right. The big question is, is uh, do you believe that Ravi is going to continue to be a software engineer after after this tournament. Yeah, you know, I, I I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing a software engineer living in California who has enough money to uh, come and play these events probably is doing pretty well at his job. Yeah. And uh, I'm also guessing that he's intelligent enough to realize that a couple of good results at poker tournaments doesn't necessarily mean you should go quit your day job. Sure. Uh, I think we just might see him on the tour a little more regularly. But I don't think he's going he's gonna to go home and retire. Jesse on the button with 9-6 offsuit. I think it's close for him. He, he double checks his holdings here. With Ravi in the big blind, I probably would, would simply be folding the 9-6 offsuit on my on my button, but he goes ahead and, and min raises. Taylor quickly folds a deuce three suited, and Ravi has the 10-queen offsuit in the big blind, and he will be at least calling here. He makes a big three bet here to 225,000. Robbie has just come to life. No mercy. You know, with what Robbie is wearing, the red, uh, does he remind you a little bit of Mario? Uh, with the mustache and everything, right? <laughs> I was thinking that before. <laughs> Robbie raises it up to 75,000 with the queen nine of clubs. And Jesse has the pocket threes here. Yeah, I think we're going to a flop. Oh. 
Off is the Jack and Dragon, four of clubs, seven of hearts. Oh, neither player really connects. I'm kind of surprised. Ravi, check here. I mean, you've got some backdoor draws. Your hand's not going to win at showdown with queen high. And he's just he's just bet. When in question, he's been betting. Does go check, check. Uh, I think he'll bet this card now with a gut shot. Could be wrong. I believe so. The other thing that Ravi has done is he has tended to bet when his opponents have shown weakness. Mm -hmm. Jesse makes a call here. I think I would have folded the pocket threes on this turn. I think so too. But perhaps he gets just he gets a sense of just how aggressive Ravi is being. And on that king, I cannot imagine that Ravi would be shutting down. But he does. He actually elects to check, and Jesse is going to win the pot with pocket threes. Not what we expected from uh, from our man who's been firing at everybody on every possibility. There's our graphic shows. Jesse's best live cash was $721,000 approximately. That was at the World Series of Poker when he won his bracelet, which was in 2010. And now all of a sudden there's a pretty big difference between Taylor Parr and Jesse Rockwitz. Taylor with approximately 1.26 million and Jesse with approximately 2.2 .2 million in chips. Both of them far fewer chips than the amateur, the only amateur left at the table, Ravi Sunder. Ace queen here on the button. He has ace queen and he raises two and a half X, which has been Ravi's standard raise size and Taylor's in the big blind with king jack suited and he certainly will be very happy to defend here. King 10-3, connects for Taylor, but also gives Ravi the gut shot. And Ravi C bets. Now the big question is, if you're Taylor here with the way that Ravi has been playing, are you going to go for the check raise? I'm very tempted to. And uh, you know, with those backdoor draws, I might just go for it. Uh, I would yeah, have, I would I would have certainly it. check raised. Uh, Taylor quickly calls. Nine on the turn doesn't change too much about this hand. Completes queen jack. I'm not a big fan of this second barrel by Ravi here. I don't mind. I I would I would fire a second barrel, but I wouldn't really? make it four hundred thousand. I just think that. Uh, so many of Taylor's hands just, if anything, they improve on the nine. Obviously, you can have the queen jack, but if you've got like jack ten, queen ten, um, you know, a jack uh, jack nine type hand, I don't, I'm not sure if you really peel the flop with jack nine. And he's just going to call. What? That is really interesting that Taylor's just electing to call. I don't really see Taylor folding here. If no. Anything, I the reason that Taylor to called the turn was, was to, to trap. Him. Yeah. <coughs> and he checks behind, so Ravi doesn't fall for that trap. The question, uh, I'm just, after seeing Ravi call two million chips on the turn with pocket queens, I just, I would think that there would be value to shoving the king jack on the turn. I would be very happy to shove there, and I would expect to be called by a hand like ten jack or... 10 queen or one of these hands that has a pair plus a straight draw. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to what Taylor's thinking was calling on the turn. I would have chosen to play that hand more aggressively than Taylor. Do you agree, Tony? Or Well, from what we've seen with Ravi, he's been so willing to just keep firing that maybe call call is better. But I like your initial just check raise idea. He's also been sticky. I don't know. It's... It's nice when you have options that are all get your chips in the middle. 
but as we saw, he gave up pretty quickly on the river. I, d- I just don't I don't think he's firing the turn with a no equity hand. Yeah, I agree there. And to the extent that he does have a pair and maybe a pair plus a plus a gut shot, uh, I think he's going to be very reluctant to fold. So. I think it may have may have been a mistake to, to simply flat the turn there, but of course Taylor did did take down the pot and here Jesse opens uh, minimum amount with uh, six four of hearts and Robbie has ace five offsuit in the big blind he elects to just call this time. Neither player really connects here on Jack 8 7. Interesting. I'm not sure if you picked up on this, but Robbie checked in a different way. He kind of checked by doing his hand in a little circle motion. Yeah, rather we than haven't. No, we haven't seen that from him. Right. right? Which and he'll just. Uh, Jesse will turn a straight there. And Robbie will turn a pair, so. We know that Robbie does not like laying down pairs. A great card for Jesse. Jesse bets a little more than half pot here. <laughs> here comes Robbie this with the raise. This is not going to go well. Raise to 425,000. Or I'm sorry, raise to 325,000 from Robbie. And I, I don't mind this. I actually don't don't mind the raise. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it that often and I don't think I would do it with this hand, but specifically in this spot, I wouldn't expect Jesse to be checking back st- super strong hands on the flop. Um, however, in this case, Jesse did turn a super strong hand and I imagine that Jesse will just be calling here. Would you agree I would with think that? so too. I would think he's just gonna call. Although against Ravi, there could be a merit to putting out a three bet here on this turn. He has been very, very sticky in in bloated pots. Mm-hmm. Wow, he does three bet. Yeah. Well, Robbie's not going to invest anymore now, will he? I I I like this from from Jesse. My instinct with his hand in this spot is to call, and against almost all players, I would call against Robbie. I think the <coughs> excuse me. I think that raising is the best play here. Robbie has been so very reluctant to fold in any spot so far at this final table where he's invested a lot of chips. I really like, I think this is a great play by Jesse here. Yeah, because if Ravi's got some odd two pair, which is very possible here, he might just absolutely refuse to fold and double you up. I mean, even without two pair, right now he is yeah. tanking with bottom pair. and No way, no, don't do it, Ravi. He Robbie. is reaching for chips. Don't do it, Ravi. He's been able to stop himself so far when he might make, like, a huge mistake. But, I mean, he, you know, he just doesn't really have any equity here. His opponent has three bet a turn in a spot where he's just, like, never bluffing. Probably doesn't have I any think, blockers I think to good hands. This is a very well thought out by Jesse here. Because yeah. the obvious standard play is to call on this spot. Yeah. In Jesse's spot. So for him to for him to to re-raise here, I think is is was very very smart of him. And now, and now he's hemmed and hawed that it just wouldn't be believable at all if he re-raised. <laughs> very 
It's all very strange. Ravi is what you would call a non-believer. We talked about that hand where he called a, a very large four bet in day two of this tournament with ace king and his opponent ended up showing up with jack five suited and that was a, a huge pot for him yeah. uh, most of the way through day two. So, so far he has been rewarded for making huge calls and here Ravi goes wow. all in. Jesse will snap. Ravi is drawing wow. dead. Oh, what a blunder. Ravi had gotten so much right thus far, and uh, this, unfortunately, is just a real spew-off. It is. It just is. So a big double up for Jesse. Gets it in with his opponent drawing dead on the turn. And Jesse is, is now just shy of being the chip leader, and uh, perhaps the person uh, you know who that hand was the worst for is Taylor is sitting there, because yeah. now Taylor is, is third in chips, and he doesn't have much of an opportunity to move up in the, in the pay scale. Um, but a, a very good hand there for Jesse. Um, doubled up his stack there. He now has 4.4 million chips, 146 big blinds, and Jesse a player with so much online experience has to be feeling very, very good being 150 big blinds deep against Robbie. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that was just a mess, I'm afraid. Yeah. Now, I want to say Robbie is still our chip leader, though, right? Slightly. Slightly. So, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, we'll also see... You know how does he how does he react to it? Does he does he stomach it well? Can he take a ma major mistake yeah. in stride and not let it tilt him? We haven't seen anything go disastrously long wrong for Ravi at this final table so far. I feel I feel like you uh, have become quite a big fan of Ravi. You're, I have. You're I, overly I was, sympa sympathetic by, <laughs> by his loss here. I was rooting for him. I wanted, to, I wanted <laughs> to see it still work out for him. Now remember, we still do have Taylor Parr going for his second WPT win back to back here, which which is an interesting story as well. But of course, now he is easily the short stack at the table, and he raises two X here, and Ravi calls with Ace Nine of Spades out yep. of the small blind, and Jesse will be folding the five deuce off in the big blind, I would imagine. However, he is. It's another spot ball. where I think you know Ravi should probably just three bet his hand. Um, I would have three bet if yeah. I were Ravi. I also would have folded if I were Jesse. That's a yeah, I don't, an interesting uh, defense there. He's not again, as we had discussed earlier. He's not getting as good of a price. Oh, look at this. I mean, Ravi and Taylor very well just might go nuts in this flop. Taylor wow. has a huge hand. Ravi has a huge hand. And if they get it in, Ravi is a big favorite. I just can't. I can't imagine it going anything with Taylor bets. Ravi raises, Taylor rips. I mean, I guess he doesn't have to rip, but I think he will. We've seen Ravi do some interesting stuff. He very yeah. well could just flat. He, he could just call, but man, he, you know, also he just lost a huge pot. Like, and he's like, oh man, I've got this sweet hand. Like, let's just play another big pot. I think. Let's see what happens. This hand's way m more fun if he raises the flop. And, and he, he does. does raise. Now, if you're Taylor, are you re-raising or are you calling? Ah, uh, man, who knows? I mean, our hand is sweet. I mean, but maybe our opponent just never folds, so we're just like getting it in with like 50% a bunch. And there you go. It's just a call. I would have just called as well with yeah. stack sizes. Because now we have a we have a spot where depending on what our opponent bets on the turn we can shove and get them to fold. The pot is seven hundred thousand. We have one point five million, so it's kind of a sweet spot if our opponent bets three or four hundred thousand and we can shove and then they will fold. Of course, in this instance, Ravi would not be folding, and Ravi elects to check the turn after check raising the flop. Both players will check. And it, wow, I see if I were if I were Taylor, I I think I would have bet. And Ravi drills trips on the river. 
Unfortunately, he's just not going to get any action. Did he just go all in? Yeah, that's not what I would have done there. Actually, I mean, it's not a terrible way to try and get a call from a 10, and obviously if your opponent has a 9, you win, but like... It's not bad at all. Yeah, you know, that's not that's actually not a, not a terrible idea, but... Um, hmm, interesting. I think as played, I, I probably would have checked the river, believe it or not. Uh, because we had already checked the turn. I do think that, that Taylor is going to bet the river with all of his uh, 10x combos and with some of his missed draws. So I probably would have checked the river in this instance, of course, with Taylor having the jack-8 of spades. That would be the only way that, that Robbie would have gotten additional chips. That could have been a much bigger pot. Certainly could have put different players in their shoes, and that's going to be a very, uh, a very different hand. I'll tell you what, that big hand between Ravi and Jesse was certainly good for your side of the of the bet. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Now, Robbie, you see betting here with middle pair. I probably would have checked the queen deuce back on this board. Yeah. Uh, Taylor elects to just call with his, his straight draw and flush draw. I would have just called as well. And the turn comes in nine, pairing Taylor, but he does not have a very strong uh, absolute hand yeah. on this board. Actually gives him more outs against Ravi and against, you know, one pair type hands, but doesn't necessarily make him thrilled with his hand. But it's it more adds to his equity than it might mean he wins the hand. And the king on the river will give this pot to Ravi if he gets to showdown. And I think with his pair, Taylor's pretty happy to just get the show down here. So both players will check. Ravi's going to win this one. Lines are going to go up 20,000, 40,000. Over the last 25 hands, Robbie has had a VPIP of 68%. VPIP is voluntarily choosing to put money into a pot. So, yeah. of course, if you're in the blinds, then that does not count as voluntarily putting money into a pot. It's, it's any additional money you put into to the pot. Uh, Taylor has had a VPIP of 44%. Now in that hand where Taylor had jack-8 of spades and Robbie had ace-9 of spades in the small blind, mm -hmm. and Jesse did complete the five deuce, which, which I wouldn't have, right. he very easily could have been thinking, you know what, I'm in position against Robbie. I'm 150 big blinds deep. If I flop some kind of straight or, or make trips, uh, there's a good chance that Robbie can do what he did last hand and I can, I can win all the chips. So yeah. he might very well be just looking to take every single post-flop spot against Robbie yes. just to, to try to mine for some very strong hands because he sees a very high upside potential. So Jesse raised the button here with the jack-7. Uh, the computer doesn't show the 7, but but I, I, I do know that he had a 7. Interesting. Um, the, uh, there was a 3-bet out of the small blind. I cannot yep. tell you what Taylor has. It goes up to 310. 
So he'll take that one down with a three bet. Now we see our monster royal flush girl social bar there. That is Brittany hanging out with some of the players. And uh, right behind there, there is the WPT Champions Cup, which bears the name of every WPT champion, including Taylor Parr, who might have uh, a little diamond next to his name if things go right for him at this final table. But he's currently the short stack, three of three. The King Queen. Taylor gives us the, the jazz hands before he looks down at, at King Queen there. Perhaps his fingers are, are falling asleep here. So, we're going to have a family pot here. Robbie has check dark. And the 10 10 8 flop doesn't connect with any of our players. Would you expect Taylor to fire out a continuation bet here? I think it's a reasonable check. I also think it would be reasonable to bet. I, I guess I would probably just bet because it's an uncoordinated flop and there's two players in there. And uh, Ravi flats wide and Jesse can have a whole bunch of random hands. Um, you know, it's a board where you're going to turn some hands, your cards, that can get you to a river, but... I think perhaps the reason he checked is mm. just because he doesn't know what to expect from Ravi yeah. at all. Nine on the river, still no help. Esai is good here if this checks check. around. It is possible that Robbie is going to win the pot with Esai, but right now he's in fact thinking about bluffing, and he chooses to check. Jesse now considering firing. He instead elects to check, and... Robbie is going to win this pot with ace five. Oh, anticlimactic. Earl wants to play five 